Welcome back to Proverbs 31 Live. So last update was that we were in the moving process, um, trying to get settled and, you know, get just, you know, settled, organized. Again, moving is a lot of work and it takes way longer than you anticipate. Um, but we are here. We are completely in our new house and we just praise the Lord for that, for his provision um, and all that he has done. So we are, I am trying to get back on track with our normal um, postings. So today we are starting back and we are talking about being an adult, especially I feel like in this culture, you often hear people say all the time, but I'm an adult. And maybe you've said it, you've thought it. Usually this comes from those who are new to adulthood, that 18 to 20 range. And they um, normally use that when someone tells them they can't do something or they shouldn't do something. And they say, but I'm an adult. That's kind of their, their reason for saying I can do whatever I want, right? And that's their justification. So I understand that. So they use it to try to prove their adulthood, their maturity, responsibility, and respectability. And that age is a hard place to be. I remember that age. Um, but it's often, like I said, used as an excuse to do what you want to do. And that is, that's the mindset that can be dangerous. Um, these groups can overlap, but often if you, if someone says it, you know, in their thirties and forties, well, I'm an adult, that's, they're saying, I don't want accountability. I can do what I want. I'm not responsible to you. Um, things like that. Like they just don't want the accountability, right? So this is somewhere we don't need to be. Okay. This is a dangerous mentality for the Christian. We do not outgrow God. We don't outgrow his commandments, his rules. We don't outgrow our responsibility to him. We don't outgrow our, outgrow his authority in our lives. So while the world is screaming, but I'm an adult, I can do what I want. We cannot let that mentality come into our lives, our minds and our hearts, our thoughts as a child of God. I don't want you to look at God or the Bible as a killjoy, um, as a list of do's and don'ts. Often that's what scripture is referred to and treated as. But God does have rules in his word. He does have principles for us to live by. He does have things that are clearly outside of the bounds for a Christian to participate in. Okay, some things are sin. And it is okay to say that is sin, that is wrong, that is unrighteous. Part of being a Christian is to behave yourself seemly. It is to do things that becometh godliness, is what the Bible says. To do things that are, um, uh, what's the word, above reproach. To live in a way that things, if you're accused of something, the accusations don't stick because they're false. That is how we are to live, above board, above reproach. Okay, so just remember that thought. Um, just as our earthly parents, hopefully, had rules that protected us, got us too. We have the freedom to obey those rules or not. The choice is ultimately up to you, but you are not free from the consequences of your choice. We have to remember that. There's positive consequences for obedience and negative consequences for disobedience, and you are free to make the choice to obey or not, but you are not free to choose those consequences. God does that. So there are rules um, or commands given in scripture that we are to live by. God desires his children to live in a way that honors him and also shows the world that he is what they need. That our lives reflect what we're saying our lives say, if there's something different about us. The love, joy, peace, hope, acceptance, comfort, everything that the world is looking for, we have. But if we live like them, if we look like them, if we talk like them, then we don't have the answers they need. That's what they think. They're not going to come to you. When you talk like them and act like them and go to the same worldly places that they do, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday morning, you want to talk about how good God is, and they're like, but you, you do all the same things I do, and I don't think God's good. So either you're just saying that, or God has favorites, and I'm not it. That's how the world thinks. Okay, we have to remember this. So God wants us to experience those things, the love, the joy, the comfort, the acceptance. 
he created us with those needs, but he is the only one that can truly satisfy that need. As Christians, we should want to let our lives show that. We should let his goodness be seen in our lives, and that should be our light to this lost and dying world. Unfortunately, too many Christians say, but I am an adult, instead of, Lord, help me to lay down my sinful desires. We can say that we're adults. We can use that as a reason to please the flesh all we want to. But it doesn't make it right and it doesn't make it okay. One area that I often see this is single adults. Whether they are, they've never been married or there's been a divorce or death of a spouse, they get back into the dating scene and date like the world. There's no difference between them and the lost. They are choosing to live together and have sex before marriage because we're adults. This should not be how God's children date. We don't even like to use the word date in our house. We use the word court. But this is not okay for a Christian. Another area is adult children who still live in their parents' homes. As a mother, I am not saying you should kick your children out the morning they turn 18. I am for children honoring their parents, regardless of how old they are, because God said to. That's what Ephesians 6.2 covers. The problem is we stop living by the house rules in search of freedom. We forget that there's freedom within boundaries rather than freedom outside of the boundaries. Everything outside of the boundary that God has set for the Christian is outside of God's protection. Does that mean God doesn't see you, know what's going on, he can't intervene? No, it doesn't. But the Lord is our shepherd, right? And the shepherd cares for the sheep. The shepherd has taken inventory of the field he knows where the fences are he knows the fences are not broken he knows that the the food and water needed for the sheep is inside that fence and they don't need to leave his care his protection his provision is within this boundary the wolves don't come inside the boundary and if they do the shepherd is there and when the sheep are inside the boundary they are close to the shepherd inside of his protection the wolves flee because he is there. When the sheep decide, I am an adult, I'm going to go on the other side of that fence because the grass is greener, they get out there and they get tangled in the brambles. They get eaten by the wolves. They get lost and they wander too far and they, they don't have water now and they don't have food now. They don't have the nourishment they need. They don't have the protection they need. Why? Because they chose to leave the care of the shepherd. And then their life is a mess. Please put it down. And they wonder why. They go, God, why did you let this happen? He says, I didn't let it happen. You wanted it. You thought the grass was greener on the other side. You thought what you needed was out there. What you needed was in here, which is why I had you here, which is why I brought you here, which is why I said stay inside this boundary. It's the same thing. We forget or ignore the law of sowing and reaping. It is still very much relevant today, just as it always has been. We convince ourselves that God doesn't even see our secret sins or they're not that big of a deal. Nobody knows who's it really hurting. We trade freedom for bondage. We fall into the devil's lie that freedom is found outside of those boundaries that God has set for us. God does not give us boundaries to make us miserable. His boundaries are for protection. Um, there's safety and there's blessings within those boundaries. The devil spoke to Eve in the garden, offering her an alternative to God's boundary. He spoke of freedom. He spoke of empowerment, enlightenment. Yet the result was actually bondage and brokenness. It was all the opposite. Why? Because the devil's a deceiver. We forget that. We, he knows what lies we need to hear. He knows what our flesh wants. And he knows how to present it. So we go, oh man, maybe you're right. And the devil's a deceiver. And if we don't remember that and call him what he is and recognize sin for what it is, then we will fall prey to his lies every single time. God loves you. He is the good shepherd. That's why he's given you the boundaries. He wants to guide, nurture, teach, and heal. But you have to let him. God is not going to force himself on you at all. God is a God of order. And holiness just should bring you comfort. He will not be mocked, but just as equally, he is love, grace, and mercy. He wants you to trust him regardless of how grown you think you are. 
You will never reach a point when God says he is no longer there for you. When he, when he says that you no longer need to come to his house because you've got it all figured out. It's great to be an adult and experience the freedoms and, and experiences and responsibilities that come with adulthood. But don't seek to outgrow God, to outgrow his leading in your life, his boundaries that he has set for you. While you can say, but I'm an adult, I hope you instead desire to say, but I'm a child of the king. Okay, let's live by his rules for our protection. Until next time, stay in the word, stay close to the shepherd, and let him lead you in paths of righteousness.